it had all sorts of wonderful themes that I'm always drawn to about a central character who is um, not at peace and needs to find himself. Um, and through the course of the, the journey he does. And, and it also touches on the political um, period, you know, of what was happening in the Congo at that time. So it was a script that kind of had everything. But fundamentally, Tarzan is a, is, it's a very romantic film. And, uh, you know, to read something that has, in addition to the action, in addition to the politics, it had a big beating heart. I think one of the reasons the movie's hopefully moving and emotional is through its DNA you feel the important values of family, community and the respect for others and the respect for the other, the thing that you don't understand, the people you don't know. And, um, and, and I think those values are very important, especially now as we enter a very complex you know, as we enter a period of history where it's, it, it seems to be getting quite messy and, you know, and difficult and people are mistrust is, are mistrust is developing. So we wanted to put a very positive message out into the world. The reason I picked Margot to play Jane is she's got some spunk. You know, she's got, she's a, she's kind of a boy's girl, you know. She's, and I, Jane had to be feisty and passionate have dignity, um, and yes, she's, she's very much a kind of a strong contemporary woman. Um, she's not, and that's why this isn't the old-fashioned Tarzan, she's not a wilting sort of flower waiting to be plucked or to be saved. She can kick ass, you know, and um, in a very passionate, earthy way. And I love that about, I love that about Margot, because Margot's very, earthy and, and fun and um, but I love that about the character that she is formidable actually and probably a bit scarier than John is <laughs> sometimes. He's trying to manage this transition to what he feels is um, being responsible, be becoming the Lord that he, he is and but he's not really at peace, he's not complete in that role, he feels unfulfilled, he feels unhappy and uh, ultimately, he's taken back to Africa and he resists going back to Africa because he thinks he should stay an English lord. And actually, in going back to Africa, he rediscovers a sense of balance and peace and community. Um, so it is, you know, it's a fable about becoming, you know, finding yourself, finding your most balanced self. I wanted Sam to be in the movie because, to me, he's an icon. He's a, he's a great actor and he's an icon of... Um, and if we're telling a story which is about a very troubled part of African history, I wanted someone with great dignity, grace, power, authority, wit. And Sam has those qualities to the max and he brings all that to the table. And right from the very start I wanted Sam because I thought, you know, I think he's a real... You know, he's got real nobility as well. We went to Africa, we looked at lots and lots of different locations. And to find the iconography, the iconic feel that I wanted and Stuart Craig, who designed the movie, wanted, it's hard to find in the real world um, without spending years and years and hundreds of millions of dollars. So we decided to, after all our years on Potter, we said, we can, we can build this world, we can create it. But it wasn't building it in a fantasy way. We wanted it to feel real. We wanted it to feel like we were in the real Africa. But it was the real Africa with a bit of a, with a little bit of a flourish and a little bit of heightened magic to it. And so we designed our jungles, we built our jungles, and then we extended our jungles with CG and then we extended again with real plates from Africa.